All right, all right. Let's see if we can make this happen. Is Amir's that music getting like increasingly intense? <laughs> In- increasingly awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was like reaching a, the boss stage. That was wild. Um, cool. There we go. So l- let's do some intros. So um, I think you know, um, you know, I think from the Shade Swap team, it'd be great to get you know really high level pitch who, who you folks are, what you folks are doing, you know, and and, and you know how Silk weaves into that story, and then I think um, you know uh, uh, Roland can maybe touch on on, on the Gork side of things. Yeah, 100%. Dolan and Fisco, if you guys want to intro yourselves, and then I can give a bit of a rundown. For sure. Hey, guys. It's Fisco behind the Shade Protocol account here. I'm the head of partnerships over over at Shade, and we're super, super excited to be partnering with Agoric for this for this next stage of growth for us. But again, I'll pass it to Dalton, and then Carter, you can give an overview of what we're looking at in the next, next coming months. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, I'm Daltz. Uh, I'm our marketing director for Shade Protocol um, and community manager as well, just when I need to be. Um, but excited to be here and, and I'll pass it to Carter. Thanks for the intros, guys. Uh, Carter Wetzel here. I'm the lead researcher at Shade Protocol. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, we, we set out to build a decentralized stablecoin that we believed you know, lived up to the ethos of decentralization. That is to say, a lot of the stable coins to date lack privacy. And there also seems to be a really strong trend towards uh, being pegged to the US dollar, which is which is great. There's a lot of demand for the dollar, but we wanted to make sure that we had um, kind of like an alternative to that kind of stable coin universe. So we set out to build Silk um, a year and a half later, here we are. We're we're incredibly close. Uh, Silk and Shade Lend are both on Testnet. That's the over collateralized model. But before we could launch Silk safely in our minds, we also want to make sure that there would be you know a home base for Silk liquidity, and that is what uh, Shade Swap is. It's a stable swap. It's a derivative swap, and it also has the constant you know product rule that most of us are familiar with the unique attributes of shade swap is that it's front running resistant because compute transactions are encrypted on secret networks so you don't have to worry about uh, any sort of front running attacks tied to that it's private tokens that are being traded there's also going to be privacy preserving leverage one click away from the rest of shade swap where you have the first ever asymmetric concentrated liquidity curve in DeFi. Um, which makes trading derivative to L1 tokens the most efficient that it's that it's ever been. Um, we also have staking derivatives as the centerpiece for all the trading pairs. It makes it a lot more capital efficient for you know Shade Protocol to incentivize liquidity uh, when it's yield bearing assets as the kind of baseline pairs as opposed to the underlying L1 tokens. We also have interdex self arbitrage. That is to say, when users make trades, um, we actually um, ARB using the very price impact that, that they create. We actually ARB it for them and give that value back to them. Um, we have an IBC bridge interface built on top of all of, of ShadeSwap, which is going to make it really easy for folks to bridge assets onto Secret Network into Shade Protocol. And finally, as like the last feature, we launched Shade Bonds uh, last year. It's the first ever Bonds product in the Cosmos. So we have a path to protocol owned liquidity. So long and short, Silk is really the flagship product, but we want to make sure that we launched a decentralized exchange that was unique, differentiated, um, had a lot of those privacy features, and we're right on the verge of launching it. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to that because I think that that's where everything kind of merges here. But I, I want to, um, uh, well, thank you for that. Let, let's let's keep doing some intros because I, I think we have Oh yeah, Zucky's here now. Cool. And, and Roland, why don't you um, why don't you give us a quick intro? Yeah, sure. Hey, hey everybody. Uh, Roland Grouse, product director at Agoric. Um, and uh, for those of you that that don't know, Agoric's a layer one smart contracting chain in Cosmos, IBC connected. We're building, in short, we're building the best place to deploy smart contracts, um, build DeFi, build NFTs, and. Uh, as part of Agoric, uh, we're also Interprotocol is launching as the first sort of flagship DeFi application on top of Agoric. 
Um, and I've been involved in some of the design there. That's something that the community has, has sort of asked for and driven forward. And so here sort of speaking on behalf of both Agoric and uh, Interprotocol Designs. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Zaki, how's it going? It's going great. <laughs> I feel like you may, might not even need an introduction at this point, but maybe it's helpful for some folks who might not know who you are. Uh, yeah, I'm Zucky. I've been working on Cosmos since 2014. Um, the, uh, I, I'm uh, the chairperson of the technical advisory board at the ICF, co-founder of Sommelier, um, I'm on the Decentralized Cooperation Foundation, which is a foundation that supports the uh, IST stablecoin and applications on top of the of the Agoric technology. Um, I, I I I I'm like a janitor of the cosmos. Basically, <laughs> that's that's what I do. I I clean up messes. <laughs> oh, uh, that sounds like a a a, a never uh, yeah some job security there. Perfect. Thank you. And um, so, okay, I, I, I think we'll, we'll get to, you know, why we're, we're all here. And, and I think the, the, the common vessel is, is, is shade swap. Um, uh, you know, um, I have some questions. And again, you know, if the community has questions, you want to jump up and ask, go for it. Um, you know, one of my main questions is, you know, what, what kind of value is shade swap and, and not just shade swap, but you know, the assets you're bringing on board, obviously, IST, um, you know, what value is that bringing to Cosmos, right? Like, why now? Um, why is it important now? Um, I'd love to love to kind of get that combo going. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a great question. I think there is really three specific needs that that Shade Swap is trying to solve for. Um, the first piece is the front running and the private tokens. There's a lot of you know trading strategies that people can have, and if your token balances are publicly visible. And if your trades can be front run, there's a lot of, you know, toxic order flow that there's a lot of value that can get, you know, bled out from that total, total transparency. So by having, you know, privacy as the centerpiece of the DEX, it's a very differentiated feature by default by being on secret network. So privacy as point number one. Point number two is the stable swap side of things. Nowhere in Cosmos have you seen a DEX where the stable coin is the primary routing token. We, we keep having this model where we say, oh, here's this volatile governance token. We're going to force liquidity providers to buy that governance token in order to have access to, you know, earning yield from being a liquidity provider. And we kind of looked at that model that gets repeated over and over and over again. And it's not ideal from a liquidity provider's perspective. It's kind of a economic model that forces value accrual to that governance token. But at the end of the day, if we were trying to build the most efficient system for the protocol in terms of emissions, I think the way you do it is by having a stable coin as the centerpiece of the DEX. And so the beautiful part about Shade Protocol is we're emphasizing that stable swap. We're having Silk be the centerpiece of that trading experience and that liquidity provider experience. And overall, that just lends itself to being a lot more sustainable and a lot more attractive for liquidity providers. The third need we're trying to solve is with derivatives. Um, I, I've been saying this for a while back in 2022, but I really think that Cosmos is on the verge of having a staking derivatives renaissance. And we're actually way ahead of the curve compared to other L1 ecosystems because we're this you know, vast array of proof of stake, proof of stake blockchain. And so the current problem is cos in Cosmos, you know, pre-staking derivative renaissance is as a liquidity provider, there's, there's a choice you have to make. Do I either stake or do I liquidity provide and miss out on that opportunity cost tied to that safe staking yield? This is kind of known as the, the, the hurdle rate or opportunity cost, whatever, whoever you want to label it. And so one of our fundamental beliefs is that these staking derivatives are significantly more efficient for liquidity providers because they don't have to make a choice between being a liquidity provider or being a staker. Um, and I think the majority of trade volume by the end of 2023 is going to be between uh, staking derivatives that are representative of the underlying L1 tokens. And so that being said, we set out to make a curve that would be hyper-efficient when going between L1 tokens 
uh, two uh, staking derivatives. So an, an example would be atom to st atom. There's really two existing models for curves tied to this, right? You have the constant product rule, which has you know liquidity equally distributed along the curve. And then you also have symmetrical concentrated liquidity. The problem with you know symmetrical concentrated liquidity is that order flow on derivatives is very predictably one directional on average, which is which is super unique. This is tied to the risk premium for long form arbitrage, which is when someone buys an undervalued derivative and then incurs a 21 day unstaking period to then realize the upside of kind of arbing an underpriced derivative. And so the constant, this, uh, the solution we came up with is, was an asymmetric concentrated liquidity curve, uh, full transparency. When we set out to build this curve way back last year with the mathematicians we pulled together, we thought that the killer use case was going to be for stable coins. We wanted to be able to um, have one of the tails of the curve be biased towards uh, protecting silk. But we kind of had a realization that stable coin order flow is symmetrical, which is why the curves of the world use symmetric curves. Um, and so staking derivatives ended up being the killer use case for this curve. So in summary, privacy, stable coin at the center of a DEX, and derivatives as, as the future of, of DeFi and Cosmos. So you, you brought up a, a handful of topics. I want to give the opportunity for others, you know, who are on this to maybe touch on that. You know, staking derivatives is a big one. Um, you know, I don't know if Zaki or, or, or Roland or, or anyone else from the Shade team wants to comment there. Yeah, just I mean, just to jump in, you know, from from my end, it, it, I I see the value in all of those things. So really excited for the launch of, of this Dex. Um, I think. In particular, the the privacy angle gives gives the the Dex a huge, huge unique advantage in in the space, um, and and so I, I think that will continue to drive demand. You know, that's something that obviously is important to to everyone in this space. You know, having all of your transactions public at all times and forever uh, is is not always the most desirable uh, thing in the world. So, uh, really really excited for the launch. Awesome. So you brought up something which I think is interesting and, and has been a point of discussion, um, you know, kind of going further down that road between, um, you know, um, I don't know if Zucky maybe can touch on this a bit, but, you know, Adam versus staked Adam. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of utility um, both across the you know, inner protocol. Um, and, you know, I, I guess I'm wondering if, if there's been more discussions around that or, or if there's anything, any thoughts you have there. I mean, I think that, you know, I'm expecting, I'm also expecting a, a move towards staked Adam. You know, like, I don't, you know, there's just sort of been, there's sort of been this interesting dynamic, right? It's like, um, I don't know, there's like a lot of FUD and uncertainty in certain Cosmos governance circles around, uh, staked atom, but like my fundamental belief is that like liquid, st like whether the Cosmos Hub wants to like kind of you know ignore the problem and then ha and like this like slow drift of atom towards staked atom um, as utility for staked atom rises and uh, uh, you know token incentives to offset um, the loss of uh, rewards with uh, uh, the loss of rewards with. Uh, um, uh, like, you know, as basically as emissions decrease, like the cost of offsetting the foregone staking rewards goes down and DeFi protocols are sort of incentivized to start adopting staked atoms because it's just cheaper um, to incentivize with staked atoms. We've already mm -hmm. done this with uh, um, with the with uh, IST incentives on Crescent, um, where we have been incentivizing uh, concentrated liquidity staked atom pools. Um, instead of concentrated liquidity atom pools, um, and I and you know it's just more capital efficient, um, and so I think that's going to be uh, the driving factor towards you know an ever increasing adoption of various atom staking derivatives, uh, whether or not the Cosmos Hub wants it or not. I completely agree with that assessment, and I do think there is unique you know, security risks for any given app chain when dealing with staking derivatives. But if the two options are, you know, work to expand 
taking derivatives with you know a subset of diversified options or choose to try to prevent the adoption of staking derivatives. I think one of them from an economic standpoint is going to happen regardless. So it's been interesting to see various app chains hold that debate and be sensitive towards it from a security standpoint, which is completely fair. Um, but I don't think it's something that can be hidden from. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And I, and I think looking at it from the inter-protocol standpoint, one of the things that the the econ committee who, who manages risk for the protocol has, has sort of articulated is as we start to see more liquidity come in for the staked atom token, it starts to become more attractive to lending protocols, right? And so, you know, inter-protocol functions that way where it needs to it needs to liquidate when when prices go down as as liquidity goes up that starts to become much much more attractive and so i think we're likely going to see a tipping point with this with staking derivatives where suddenly the liquidity is sufficient and the the pools are deep enough that suddenly it just becomes the de facto. I, I think that that's what's going to end up happening and maybe maybe that sort of aligns with the the launch uh, or the integration of um the, the module in Cosmos that allows you to move to a staking derivative without having to unstake, uh, I, I'm guessing that we're, we're going to see that tipping point sometime in the next few months. Yep, com completely agree. And one thing we're doing to facilitate the adoption of derivatives without picking one winner is we actually want it there to be a derivative swap. So we're going to have pools that allow you to trade between the various staking derivatives. So whether you're a fan of the persistence atom staking derivative or stride or quicksilver the goal would be is you can essentially have you know a stable swap symmetrical curve between staking derivatives um and that's going to be very very capitally efficient from a liquidity provider's perspective because both of those assets in that pool are yield bearing assets and they're both pegged to the same underlying asset so we don't need to incentivize, you know, 20 different pools for every new staking derivative in the cosmos. What we can instead do is have a, a system where they're pegged, not pegged, I guess, pooled against each other and then have that liquidity routed to all the rest of the pairs. So we have a plan to onboard every single staking derivative and become the center point for derivative to derivative swaps. Yeah, that starts to get very interesting also as as. Um, protocols like Interprotocol, but also I would expect, you know, UMI and Mars, any other any other lending protocol starts to look at how they might be able to do liquidations more effectively and and um, integrate cross chain in interesting ways. So so pretty excited for that. I, I have a I have a quick. I'm kind of changing the direction, uh, but I'm I'm curious why with the shade, you know, the upcoming shade swap. I, I noticed it was you know IST USDC and I think USDT, USDC pairs as the first ones. And I'm curious kind of why, why you folks chose IST and, and you know, um, maybe we can talk to that quickly. A hundred percent. So, uh, you know, the pre, pre uh, silk launch on February. Well, ooh, man, I almost leaked some alpha. My bad, my bad. No one heard that. No one, no one heard that. Um, so essentially there's, there's two phases. The first rollout is the DEX without silk. And then the second part of the rollout is uh, the DEX once Silk is live. So in phase one though, we wanted to kind of prove that the stable swap works um, even before Silk exists. And so we said to ourselves, what are the kind of the, the, the three key stable coins that we'd like to kind of proof for the whole cosmos of like, oh yeah, shade swap, stable swap, there it is front and center, that's awesome. And the answer was USDC, you know, Axlar USDC, Axlar USDT, and then IST, just because I think it's the most, you know, I, I believe in the, the security of IST um, significantly when we examine the various options. And of course, you know, IST as a, as a partner with, with Shade Protocol and Shade Swap, we kind of wanted to honor and recognize that commitment. And it's also recognition of the, the security model. And that's why we'll be launching with the IST pair out of the gates even before Silk goes live. No, awesome, awesome. Um, I don't know if Zaki or Roland had any response to that, but um, so I <laughs> this might open a can of worms, and, and I, I know we have some you know pretty heavy product folks here, but um, I, I you know 
I've been seeing thread and thread and thread about you know UX being this kind of huge huge hurdle for for you know adoption and I think progress. Um, you know, with the shade swap, how are you folks thinking about UX? Um, and I know you know from the inner protocol side, that's been you know that's been something um, also discussed. So maybe we can we can open that can of worms quickly. I love I love that can of worms. <laughs> so you know this stuff it, it keeps us up at night, right? Because privacy. Traditionally, people say you can't have good UI UX because the privacy technology is going to you know, complicate the user experience. And then add to the fact that we're not an app chain, right? We're, we're, a, we're, a, set, we're a series of smart contracts built on top of Secret Network. How in the world do you hand, like, how do you, to use a dangerous word, how, how do you compete with other DEXs that can have, you know, Zero, zero fees for that, for that bridging experience and for those, that initial trading experience. And so we're actually uh, launching very quickly after ShadeSwap launches a fee grant module. And so the way it works when people go app.shadeprotocol.io forward slash bridge, which is a totally IBC. If anyone hasn't gone to the bridge page on Shade Protocol, you should do it because you can bridge assets from Juno to Osmosis, from Osmosis to Agoric. It's not just a secret network bridge. It's a totally generalized IBC interface. That's super, super amazing. We've had thousands and thousands of users already use it. But long and short, the first part of every user story is the bridging experience, right? And so the way it's going to work is when you bridge into secret network, if you don't have any secret in your wallet, we're essentially going to ensure, ensure that the user arrives and has a little bit of... Uh, secret in their wallet um, and that they've actually swapped a little bit of their bridged asset for for gas in their wallet so the user will of course be parts of the user interface that says hey like is it cool that you arrive and you have a little bit of gas in your wallet but we're able to pull this off because there's this this fee grant module in cosmos and so the protocol essentially is paying for um the wrap transaction when their assets are turned into their privacy preserving equivalent and then we also cover the cost of them swapping um, their privacy preserving asset for a little bit of gas that gets sent back to their, their wallet. So we've essentially been able to recreate the app chain experience for users when they first come to Shape Protocol. So they don't have to go to some other decks to acquire secret, send it to their secret network wallet, and then bridge their assets over, right? Instead, you can bridge in without any gas and immediately start, begin, like actually begin using the app. So we've been pretty obsessed with trying to at least compete semi with that with that app chain user experience. And I think what we've created is, is probably as close as you can get without being an app chain. And then on the privacy front, um, with, with permits and viewing keys, we've really tried to, to, tried to simplify the nomenclature and reduce the number of, of, of clicks and confusion anywhere on the app. So overall, I think people are going to be very pleasantly surprised when they show up to Shade Swap. It's probably not even going to feel like a traditional secret network experience, and it's probably not. Gonna, you probably won't even feel like you're on like a privacy chain. That's that's our goal. That awesome, nice. So and and so just to chime in on that from from my personal perspective, and I, I wouldn't say this is necessarily the agoric perspective, but I I, I sort of view it the UX challenge happens on multiple levels within this space, right? Like at, at the most basic level, we're asking users to do something which is fundamentally new to people entering, which is you manage a wallet that is in control of the assets that you have on various chains and you have a private key or a seed phrase that you can never lose and also never share with anybody and you might need access to on, a, on short notice, but you know, you don't ever want somebody to stumble upon it, right? And so there's this like huge fundamental UX challenge that we all have to get over um, and figure out how to make better. And, and I see progress happening overall in the space there. Um, but then beyond that, we have to think about, okay, for the specific functionality in our dApps, how do we, how do we use that, that wallet you know, what additional requirements do you have? And, and so on the secret network side, uh, there's additional requirements around privacy. On the Agoric side, we have additional requirements where, you know, existing third-party wallets don't handle Agoric objects. Agoric has all these concepts that aren't, are sort of above the functioning of normal blockchains. And so as a result, we have an additional wallet step. And so um, it really, we really do have to, as, 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 
you guys said, you know, think about the onboarding experience and the, the UX experience as sort of the first conversation that happens for, for anything that, that launches. Like, how do you bridge in? How do you make sure that you're on the right tab and, and sort of know what to do, uh, which is non-trivial. But then when, when you sort of take a step back and look at it, the success of this space in, in despite all of these challenges, to me, is sort of a major signal that, that something really important is happening, right? We have all these users that are willing to go through these hurdles to get to, get to what um, is being offered. And so that, to me, is the kernel that, that keeps reminding me that we're doing something important and powerful here. And I'm optimistic that the, the larger, you know, longer term UX challenges will start to get better and we'll start to see a better ecosystem of custodians for regular people and um, various ways to handle wallets and, and new application structures that, that manage things well. So I, hopefully that's a hopeful note. I also think, um, you know, I think Shade is like sort of one of the first secret network products that's sort of generally for the IBC ecosystem. You know, it's like really cool that it's like launching with, you know, IST as a native, uh, as the initial stable coin. Um, and I think that's like really cool is just like, you know, starting to see these uh, cross chain collaborations. I think we're also going to see this is like the bet, like a lot, I think a lot more teams are going to start seeing cross chain collaborations as like a key to successful go to markets in the cosmos. Um, you know, try, you know, with IST, for instance, it's always been like a big guiding principle, right? It's like we launched IST, but it wasn't about bringing users to the Agoric chain. It was about making IST as available as a service and as an asset uh, to the wider Cosmos ecosystem, right? And so, you know, that was always the initial go-to-market plan with IST, and I think that has been working, um, and it's really great that, like, people are uh, coming on this journey with us. Amazing, amazing. So I, I know we're pretty much at the time I, I promised some of the speakers here, but, um, you know, quickly, I just want to take some community questions. I think um, uh, B4 Commons uh, requested to speak. Can we can we bring can we bring them up? They're connecting. All right, they should be able to speak. Hey, how's it going? All right, cars, you're good. What's your question? Nothing. Carson, I think you're muted right now. I don't know if you know that yet. Okay, on to the next person. <laughs> Let's, um, I think, uh, we had we had one, did someone pull? Okay, someone pulled. Um, well, this is your opportunity, if you have questions. We'll get, I'll give it a minute. I lied. I'll give it 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess we got nothing. I guess you guys blew it out of the water. Well, thank you, everybody who joined. Shade Protocol team, Silk, Inner Protocol, Agoric folks, Carter, Roland, Zucky, everybody, man. Uh, this is this is really cool, and, and um, I learned a lot on this call. I hope Hope our listeners do too. Thanks for joining. Uh, we'll be doing more of this stuff coming up, and um, you know, we have you. Hope you have a great afternoon, morning, evening. Um, thank you all. Seriously. See you all too in uh, East East Denver. For anyone that's gonna any yeah. any cosmonauts, uh, Shade Protocol will be attending uh, East Denver. So if you see anyone wearing Shade apparel, Shade logos, logos, flag us down. We'd love to chat and be sure to join the Shade Protocol community. We've been building for well over a year and it's all coming to a head this next month or two. So I would love for anyone in the cosmos to, to join the journey of silk also going interchain as well as this beautiful confluence between the many, many app chains and, and the 2023 DeFi Renaissance in my mind, that's, that's rapidly approaching. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, you're right. We do have an event together, don't we? <laughs> I believe so. Yes. Yeah. I almost forgot about that one. Yeah. That's uh, so. If yeah, again, if you're in Denver, look up a uh, 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 Cosmos Peak event. Yeah, we're co-sponsoring with Shade, a few other really cool projects. Um, but yeah, thank again, thank you everybody. Have a good one, guys. Happy building. Yeah.